Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Happy Foundation Friday. So for the month of May, I've got a dope series that we're gonna be doing, Foundation Friday. So every Friday for the rest of this month, the videos are gonna be dedicated to foundation. I feel like foundation is the foundation of makeup. Your foundation, your base can make or break your whole makeup look. So for today, we're just starting all about foundation. So I've done all about powders, I've done all about concealer, so we're just gonna do all about foundations. We're not really gonna be talking about specific products or what products are good for who. We're gonna do that throughout the course of the month. But for today, I've got a lot of foundations here. I've got some for my personal stuff, some for my kit, and we're just gonna go through and talk about everything. I've got my list here, so you know the deal. If you see me looking down, I'm just referring back to my notes. Okay, the first thing you need to understand about foundation is your skin type. Skin type is key, because if you're not familiar with your skin type, and you're foundation shopping, nine times out of 10, you are going to pick the wrong foundation for your skin. A lot of the times, it's not even necessarily that a foundation is bad, it's just not conducive with your skin type. So, you might have dry skin, combination skin, oily skin, or normal skin. Normal skin, right in the middle, not too dry, not too oily, well balanced, you're blessed, your skin's perfect, you can wear whatever foundation you want, you're gonna be fine. What a dream. Next up, dry skin. Dry skin tends to feel tighter, you know what I mean? Whenever you put any kind of foundation or anything on, you just notice that your skin always looks dry, or if you put foundation on, it just kinda sucks it up. That's dry skin. Or let's say if you have, if you're dry skin and you have any kind of maybe like patchiness on your skin, or if you feel like you have some acne spots that are really, really dry, those are some other traits of dry skin as well. Now, combination skin's tricky because you have, what's in my teeth? Has this been here the whole time? Combination skin? You got both. So I have found for most people with combination skin, they typically are drier on the perimeter, but then like in the center or on the T zone, they're oily. That's tricky because now you're thinking, well shoot, if I get a foundation that's more suited for dry skin, then the center of my face is gonna be oily, but then if I get a foundation that's suitable for oily skin, it's gonna be too dry for the outside of the face. That's a beast. And last but not least, my skin type, good old oily skin. I am oily 365, 24 seven, all year long. Now, of course, when it gets cooler, I do feel like my skin is just a little bit drier, but I'm still in the oily category. Oily skin, you are always have what I call like a natural built-in glow. You're always shiny. That's just what you look like on a regular basis. So those are the skin types. So once you've figured out what your skin type is, it's gonna help you when you're shopping for foundations. For instance, let's say if you are someone who's dry, you don't wanna do matte because matte's gonna be too drying, but see, then it gets tricky because in the summertime, when it is a little bit warmer, you might be able to pull off a matte foundation, but you just have to make sure you're moisturized. And same thing if you're oily, and let's say in the wintertime, you might not want a super, super matte foundation. I know I typically don't so you can go for something a little bit more hydrating and it might not look as oily on you as it did if you were to wear it in the summer so there are so many little tweaks and little things there and just depending on what time of the year it is is really gonna play up into your skin type as well now something else that's huge when it comes to foundation as well primers okay so me personally for my oily skin I don't believe in primers I think your foundation and how it looks on your skin and how it applies is basically gonna be all boiled down to your skincare I feel like if your skincare is on point you don't need a primer for my girls that are on the drier skin, I don't necessarily think that you need a hydrating primer for my clients when I'm working on them. I don't use a hydrating primer or anything. I just make sure that I take care of their skincare and make sure that they are well moisturized. If you're well moisturized, I feel like you're good to go. Same thing from oily skin. If you've made sure that you use your toner and you use a moisturizer that is correct for your oily skin, you'll be good. As far as I'm concerned, I have truly yet to find a mattifying primer that actually helps 
keep me matte for a long time and control the oil. I've done trial runs where I'll put the primer on one side, nothing on the other, and ultimately my skin looks the same. So for me and my skin type, make sure you hear me loud and clear. Everybody's skin type is different and different things work for different folks. Because I know I'll get to one in the comments. Well, I have my primer works for me. That's great, sis. I agree that that's great that it works for you but it don't work for me, okay? So, and also, try it out yourself. In fact, I encourage everyone to try it out, no matter what your skin type is, especially if you are someone who does wear primer. I want you to put primer on one side of your face and not on the other, and just check it out throughout the course of the day and see if you can even tell a difference. All right, so, primer. Now, let's jump into coverage. So, we've got our skincare taken of. We know what our skin type is. Next up, how much coverage do you want? Do you want a light coverage? Do you want a medium coverage? Or do you want a full coverage? This is gonna be different and vary for everyone because everyone has different skin care needs. So for someone that might be acne scarring, it might be hyperpigmentation, it might be rosacea, these are all different things. Or if you don't have any of that stuff, then you might feel like, hey, I just want my skin to look overall even. So for a lighter coverage foundation, obviously if you have something that you want to cover, you're not gonna like it. If you are someone who has great skin and you put on a full coverage foundation, now there are some people that have great skin and they're just a full coverage queen and there's nothing wrong with that. But for the most part, I have found that people that do have decent skin, they're not really looking for a full coverage foundation. So now that we got all of those things talked about, we're just gonna go down the list here and I've got all sorts of different foundations. We're gonna talk about the first one, which is Honestly, my favorite, which I think is totally overlooked, powder foundations. Okay, powder foundations are great because they are buildable. You have control over how much coverage you want. My two favorite, MAC Studio Fix. I'm in the shade NW43. Someone asked me in a video, I can't remember what it was, I addressed it in my community tab, but I do wanna talk about it here. I know with MAC, the NC, I believe they go neutral cool and NW, neutral warm. Someone said, because someone wanted to know why I went with NW versus NC since I said I had more of a golden undertone and NC typically is what the girls that do have more golden undertones use. The MAC NC series and the powder foundation, for me, it pulls green on me. It's too cool. So that's why I opt for NW. Now this is for the powder. I can't tell you really what shade I am in their liquid just simply because I haven't I tried it once, but that's what I'll do. I'll go get shade match and we'll talk about that in a later on video for Foundation Friday. But as far as the powder goes, NW does not pull green or too cool on me. So NW43, this is great because I have control over the coverage. You can get full, full coverage with this baby, okay? So if I just want a light sweep, or if I wanna keep stippling the powder on, I can get a full coverage. Now this next one here, the Maybelline Superstay, this is in the shade Coconut. This. I highly believe is a dupe for the MAC, for the MAC powder, just simply because, same thing, you can get a minimal coverage or you can pack this baby on and get a full coverage. What I love about powder foundations is, y'all, they are quick. They are so quick. So let's say if I'm running late, I'm pressed for time, and even if I do need a more fuller coverage look, I can do it really fast and be done with it. Another great pressed powder that I like um, is the Cover FX. Their powder is a really, really good one. That one is not gonna give you a lot of coverage. However, I like that one if you are someone that does have drier skin just simply because it doesn't really get too matte on you and it doesn't settle in any dry areas or fine lines. That's a really, really beautiful one to use. And another powder that I love that's also a good one for if you are dry skin as well, MAC Mineralized Skin Finish. So I have my shade here. This one is in the shade dark. As you can see, I'm hitting pan. And then today I just picked up Dark Golden here. And this one is what I'm gonna be using to set up under my eyes. And then in summertime, I like to use this a lot. And this will just be used as a light sweep all across my face. I love these for setting up under the eyes on all skin tones, all skin types, just simply because it's not too drying like a loose translucent powder would be. 
but it'll give you a nice little glow and set everything and it's not too drying. So I love these for under the eyes, all over the face, all skin types. And then another powder foundation is the Bare Minerals. So here, these are from my kit. So this one is the original formula and then I have one here in warm, dark, in the matte formula. These are great powder foundations, I think, if you have dry combination skin. I don't like either one of these on my skin type just simply because I do have pores. My pores are larger in charge. And I have found that anything that's like more of like a mineral foundation it just really intensifies the pores and texture on my skin even with the matte version when I tried it I did not like it on my skin but these I do like and I do use them on anyone that does have more of a combination dry skin this looks beautiful on so those are our powder foundations next up BB creams so BB creams you have no wiggle room. Like if you're gonna use a MAC powder, the Studio Fix or the Super Stay, you got wiggle room. If you wanna have a light, medium, or full, you can get that. BB Creams is just strictly light. So this is for the girl who, oh, I don't want too much. I just wanna add a little bit more color, a little bit more warmth to my skin, a little something something. If you're a less is more girl, or if on the weekends when you're running errands, just wanna throw something on your face, you have BB Creams. Now, I kinda, I go back and forth with BB creams because these are the ones that I keep in my kit. I like these a lot, Makeup Forever. I use these on my tweens. So if I'm doing any kind of teenager, if I'm doing prom, anything like that, and the girl just doesn't need a lot of coverage or I don't want to put a ton of coverage on her, I will just go in with these. Now BB creams, I like them, but why I'm also kind of on the fence with them is just simply because this is $34, I believe. And so in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, so $34 for this, when I can get a Fenty foundation for $35, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, so why not just take a foundation that I already have, cocktail it in with some face moisturizer, and boom, it's automatically a BB cream. That's just my thought process behind it, because you know I'm always looking for ways to be mindful about the money that I'm spending on my makeup and not splurge crazy. But for me, I get it, I understand yes BB creams are cool but at the same time it's something that I feel like I don't really have to buy and if I want a BB cream like experience I can just pick a foundation and mix it in my moisturizer and voila BB cream but light light coverage so we have our BB creams next up stick foundations okay so stick foundations typically are gonna look the best on drier skin. Now, if you have oily or combination skin, well, if you have combination skin, I feel like you can rock a stick foundation too, but if you do have oily skin, I feel like you can wear a stick foundation. It's just probably gonna be better suited for in the cooler months. And the reason why I say that is, with stick foundations, they're typically a little bit more hydrating, a little bit more creamier, with the exception of this first one that I'm about to show you, and this one is my favorite, Maybelline Superstay. This stick foundation is a bomb. My only hang up on this is you don't really get too much product, but I love this. This is a cream to matte formula, which is unheard of truly for stick foundations. This legit dries down matte, and this is super, super easy. If you're someone who's on the go, if you gotta do your makeup in the the car when you're parked of course before work and you just want a little something something that's where stick foundations are cool so if you're oily and you're looking for a good stick foundation I love this one. Also, another one that is formulated for oily skin, but a lot of people don't really talk about too much is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Stick Foundation. Yo, do you guys follow Norvina? Shh, they're about to drop a foundation in August. I'm so here for it. I cannot wait, wait, wait. This year, I've only bought one foundation so far. So I've got it down to, I'm probably only, I'm allowing myself to only buy four foundations a year. Just four. I know that sounds crazy, but that's that's what I've done. And the reason why I say four is just simply because that's gonna be give me enough time to get through the rest of these before they expire. Like she's up to expire first. So I'll be using this one a lot. Anyway, let's stay focused. ABH is coming with the foundation in August. I'm buying it. Anyhow, there's stick foundations. I have tried it. I don't remember what, I think I had chestnut and it was okay, but I felt like it did make my pores look large. However, the stick foundation in the shade earth for a contour yep i use this on my wedding if i need to just be 
beat looking like a queen I use this this is great I honestly I don't know how this would go on dry skin because it is formulated for oily skin like even putting it on it goes on creamy but it's not as smooth or rich not rich it's just the formula is different than a traditional stick foundation something like the what I have here the makeup forever ultra HD these are from my kit I use makeup forever foundation on my clients because I absolutely love it so these here this is a light one here but this is very very like it glides on super super creamy I love these for my dry skin babe so if you are someone that has dry skin I love how this goes on but I will say this if you are not exfoliated it can catch on you sometimes so just make sure that your skin is nice and exfoliated and you don't have any dry patches on love this it doesn't look drying on the skin also with this one if especially if i am working on a mature client i'll just put this on and i don't have to set it that's the other thing too a lot of the times it's not even the foundation it's the powder that you could be using to set it especially if you are dry your skin because a loose translucent powder is more so suited for someone who has oily skin for a stage for film work because you really need to just lock that baby in for everyday life if you're someone that has dry your skin you probably really don't need a loose translucent powder I honestly would recommend if you feel like you have to set I'd recommend getting a MAC mineralized skin finish and that's going to do the trick for you it's going to set it but it's not going to be too dry but these are super super creamy you get a lot of product in and you get medium coverage but if you want to build it up you can and the way that these photograph baby beautiful and then my next foundations here, these are sticks, but they are a part of my client kit as well. So I had to break them down to a palette, but this is my black opal foundation. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven shades here. The reason why I have these is because I'm obsessed with Sam Fine. Sam Fine is an OG makeup artist. If you're a makeup enthusiast, makeup artist, or some makeup junkie, you probably know who he is. And I was listening to a podcast of his. He was on someone's podcast, I think maybe two or three years ago. And he said that he used black opal foundation stick on Gabrielle Union or Queen Latifah on basically all of his black women, women of color and my mind was blown because you know in the makeup artist world it can get kind of snooty and pretentious like oh I only carry Giorgio Armani in my kit well sis I can't afford Giorgio Armani and when you are a makeup artist you have to invest so much into your kit it has taken me literally to the point that I am now seven years to get my kit to where it is and it's definitely not what I call a prestige prestige kit you know what I mean I'd probably say the majority of my products we can do a good 80% of my products are high-end and then I do have things like NYX liners and there is stuff like that however these black opal stick foundations for my beautiful brown skin beauties oh glory I love these and I've even used these on girls with oily skin and I just love the way that it looks the reason why I love these is because unfortunately I have yet to come across a brand even talking high-end that has deep dark complexion foundation shades that are as rich as, as these just the shades and the undertones oh my goodness and for all of my clients especially my women of color I always mix and cocktail the foundation so that way I can get the undertone and the shade just mm, that's my favorite part of doing makeup on clients the foundation and cocktailing their specific very special own customized foundation shade love it just black opal does a fantastic job so if you are someone who is looking for a stick foundation and you want a bomb shade here you go black opal they also do they have liquid I can't, I'm not sure if they have liquid I'll have to look into that but as far as sticks these are bomb and then last but not least here we got some liquid so for the most part I have found that most liquid foundations normally start at medium coverage if it is light coverage it's a BB cream so light coverage for me when I think of light I automatically go to BB creams so we'll start with medium coverage so the most perfect medium coverage my favorite medium coverage foundation Fenty Beauty she's matte so if you're not an oily hot slippery mess like myself girl don't touch this now we are approaching summer so if you want to heavily moisturize and give her a go give her a go but once we start dropping in temperature and you have dry skin 
I saw a girl when this first came out, I'll never forget it, it was two girls, super, super cute. They were teenagers and they were trying it out and I was watching the girl with dry skin put it on and she was so funny, she put it on, she goes, wow, I don't look like Rihanna. <laughs> And I kind of looked at her and I was like, nope, little miss, you don't. Her skin was dry and it just settled. It, she looked like she was about a thousand years old. It was not a good look. But if you are someone who has oily skin and you're not looking for a full coverage, you want something that's medium, this is where you're at. I have built this up before, but honestly, this isn't really built like that. Like what you put on your face, what you see is what you get. I love this. I'm in the shade 400 right now, summertime shade 420. I probably won't even buy 420 this this summer just simply because I'm already here with this one and I just bought this probably over the holidays but um I love this this is a great medium foundation medium coverage foundation if you are someone that does have oilier skin now if you are someone who still wants medium coverage and you're a little bit more on the combo the dry skin the liquid form of the makeup forever this is one of those foundations that i keep in my kit because again this is a all around foundation when i say all around this is a foundation that i can use on mature skin dry skin combination and oily skin this will never fail me so if you are someone who's just looking for a good all around foundation no matter what your skin type is and you want something that is light this is it this one is buildable as well i'm sorry if you want something that's medium not like if you're looking for something that has medium coverage and you want to be able to build i say go with this and then last full coverage okay so i actually have two full coverage foundations if you like full full and you are oily and you want your makeup to stay on kat von d locket foundation Girl, a lot of people are afraid of this foundation. I am not. So I wore this foundation on my wedding. This is a foundation that I wear if let's say I'm working a wedding or I'm doing fashion week, working a fashion show and I need to be beat, but I need my makeup to stay on. She don't budge. Once she's on, she's on and she's on and she's on until you wash her off. Not budging. Another one that I love, you guys saw me use this like consecutively, the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear. I am oily skin and this is a foundation that I typically would not think would be suited for my oily skin. However, this is my wintertime foundation and she is full coverage. So for me, I just love the way that this foundation looks on my skin. Now I do dull it down a little bit by using a sponge, but this is one. It is for probably more so suited for drier combination skin, but I can pull it off when it's cold outside. Now, right now she can't pull this off. It's just not gonna work, but this is a full coverage foundation and it's not too, too thick either. Kat Von D I think is intimidating because she is thick, but it's easy to work with. You know, you just gotta make sure you have a good hand with it. So all about foundations. I hope and pray that was helpful to you. Down below, I want to know your thoughts on this video. Did it help you? Did you learn something new? Also, are you digging Foundation Fridays for the month of May? I'm so excited about it. You guys, I'm so thankful and I love you all so much. Oh, also down below, I want you to tell me your skin type and your favorite foundation, all right? You guys know the deal. Keep it simple and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.